I'm here with Lucy Rose. Thank you so much for sitting down with me. How are you doing today? Yeah, very good. How are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. And so you're on this tour. You've got two um, more gigs left after today at the Rescue Rooms. How's it been for you so far? So far, so good. Yeah, yeah it feels weird that we're so close to the end mm -hmm. and hopefully it all goes to plan. But so far, all the gigs have been a lot of fun. The last two months have been really exciting. Yeah, and it must be exciting as well to have this new album. Um, how long did it take um, for you to kind of get all the songs um, together for it? Did it? Was it a long process? Um, I guess it was as long as it was since the day I finished my first record. Yeah. I think the one song, Into the Wild, which is the closing song on the record, um, I wrote as I, I finished the first record. Yeah. So I guess I've been continuously writing since then, which is nearly, you know, two and a half years, but there was probably six months in it, which was going to press and yeah. final. So I think the whole thing was written in about two years and yeah. um, I probably wrote about 50 songs and then just cut it down. Yeah, I mean, because you're, you're an artist that's definitely known for um, being the centre of your own music, not having anyone kind of co-write with you. Mm -hmm. And obviously as you've got um, bigger and your name's got bigger, as is your music, um, a lot of people then go to other people's help to, um, with, with their music writing. What's made you kind of stay very solo on that? I guess I'm just interested to see if I can do it. And I don't know if it's... Um, something about females or something but I feel like a lot of solo female artists do have a lot of pressure to go in and work with co-writers and mm. the majority of co-writers are men yeah. and they're like older men and I'm like no there are lots of great girl female writers and there always have been and I kind of just wanted to put my record out and and show that you know mm. girls can write their own records yeah. um, and I know there are lots of, of other artists that do it like Laura Marling and Marika Hackman and all of those ones yeah. as well but um, I guess there's just a lot of pressure and I just wasn't willing to, you know, give into it. Yeah. I followed your music from quite a young age actually. I think I saw you at Redfest. Um, but I must have think that when you came off uh, stage a couple of years ago, it must have been about 15 at the time, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, but, um, but I know that you're an artist as well. You, you play a lot of instruments. You, as you said, you like to do it yourself. What was the first instrument? Was it guitar that you kind of sat down and had a go at first? or Because on this album especially, you, that a lot, it's mostly done by you, isn't it? All of the yeah. instrumentation. Yeah, all the arrangements like the first record um, I've done um, and that's really exciting. I think the first instrument that I really fell in love with was the drum kit mm. and I think at school a lot with music you're doing a lot of the um, technical and the theory yeah. of part of music which I probably didn't really get on with mm. and scales. I remember sitting down at the piano just doing hours of mm. scales practice which I know is good theory but mm. for me not very exciting yeah. to do. And I think when I sat down and I started playing drums for the first time because my sister decided she was going to learn, I just copied her. Mm. That was very exciting and I really enjoyed playing. Yeah. Um, and I probably that influenced me into saving up some money and buying an acoustic guitar and teaching myself how to play that as well because mm. at that point me and my sisters all had lots of different instruments and I think my parents thought we should stick to one and I was now wanting to learn mm. the guitar or something. So it was mm. kind of too much. And I guess learning or teaching myself was really important because yeah. it gave me a lot of freedom just to explore and not be restricted to scales and pieces and being taught by somebody else. Yeah. It was just doing what I wanted. side of things obviously at Reading last year I saw you pop on stage with Bombay Bicycle Club yeah, the, yeah and mm -hmm. I thought you could say no I was like it definitely was you <laughs> really drunk. yeah no I think we all were it's yeah. fine <laughs> but it was it was brilliant to um obviously you supply vocals for them in, in terms of collaborating with other artists um is this something that you kind of want to continue doing or you, have you sort of been there done that and want to focus on yourself a bit more now no I'll always have time to collaborate mm -hmm. I think it's really really a good thing I guess you get that a lot more in the sort of like hip hop world and all the, the sort of other genres seem to be way more collaborative mm. of like, will you come and feature on my song, etc. Mm. And 
all of that and it's like yeah let's just do that but in you know in whatever genre you're in mm. and yeah being asked to sing on Bombay songs were really amazing and mm. same with Ghost Poet and yeah. Manic Street Preachers them asking me it's just a, an honour really for anyone to say I'd like your voice would add a sort of texture to this yeah. song you know it's just amazing yeah. <laughs> Moving on sort of from the music side, I'm a tea lover. I'm not oh, really? going to lie to you, I'm a massive tea lover. And with your merchandise, wasn't there, didn't you make your own Still tea? Do. Yeah, you do. So tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> this was just um, an idea I had probably five years ago, or more than that. And it was mainly I was going through one of my phases. I'm quite bad at going through phases of like drinking certain things, mm. potions, but my one <laughs> at the time was a mixture of Earl Grey and English breakfast and it was in a pot together and I was telling everyone it's amazing, it's delicious, yeah. the best tea and no one makes it. And I, I can't remember, I think I was around at my manager's one day and I was like, well, let's make this cup of tea, it's amazing, going off on one. He was like, we should just make this because at this point I was playing lots of little gigs and I had nothing to sell and I really had no music either that was at the point where I could sell it and it wasn't good enough at that point, mm. the recordings that I was doing. So we just looked into it and found this little tiny tea factory on the south coast and um, spoke to them. I had a few blends and I tried a few <laughs> different versions and I made this this tea. Yeah. And um, I started selling it and I think at the beginning it was like this gimmicky thing which people were like, oh, this is quite, this is quite different, so yeah. let's buy it. And now some people I think are truly addicted. Oh wow. Yeah, I think. <laughs> so they've now got the same taste buds as you for this blend of mysterious so. magical tea. I right potentially then. would get bottled if I didn't supply it, I think, at my gigs now. Yeah. People want it. That's good. It's such a good idea though, especially if you've got younger people coming to your gigs. What's alcohol when you've got tea? got the tour so we've got two days left of the tour uh what's next after the tour do you want to chill for a little bit or is it continue with pushing the album i guess um i've got some downtime really i've got the odd thing going on um at home when we get back but i think i'll just be writing whenever mm. i can um i feel like i need to get on with the third record now mm. and start concentrating on that and um I think I might be doing a bit of touring next year and a little bit here and there and I've got a couple of little music videos that I want to make as well yeah. for other songs. Um, so I think it'll be a combination of seeing this album through and starting thinking about the next one. Oh, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me. It's been great to see your um, sound check as well and just have a little bit of the behind the scenes footage right. of that. Good luck with tonight and the rest of your tour. And yeah, have a brilliant evening. Thank you very much. Cool. <laughs>